The Gamesters of Triskelion is a story about slavery. This desire for freedom is among the most powerful forces throughout history, from the story of the Exodus in the Old Testament, to the Declaration of Independence, to Spartacus, and Uncle Tom's Cabin. There is a force within us that will not tolerate confinement, either physical or spiritual. That force is the subject of this episode. So let's beam down to the planet Triskelion, where Kirk and crew face danger and even death at the hands of the Gamesters of Triskelion. That was foolish, Captain. I had a gown that went from the shoulders all the way to the floor. Captain. And I thought, well, now how am I going to move? Indeed. And I had just seen the Morsayev dancers, who, the Russian folk dancers that had come over. And they had a dance called the Partisans, in which they had robes all the way to the floor. And they looked like they were on wheels until they opened the robes and they were not. And it was fascinating. And so I tried to move that way. And I think I succeeded finally. It took me the better part of the week to really get it going. But that kind of thing was possible too. You could come up with your own idea and people would allow it as long as it fit. The first draft of the Gamesters of Triskelion featured the character of Mr. Sulu. Actor George Takei was away on location at the start of Star Trek's second season. He was shooting the movie The Green Berets, so our script was changed to focus on Ensign Chekhov instead. Unfortunately, Chekhov is not so lucky in his pairing with Tamun, with her overpowering size, solid yellow complexion, and bright green lipstick. They are, without a doubt, the oddest couple in the Star Trek series. Who are you? What is this place? What do you think you're going to do with us? I am Gort, the Master Thrall. This place is the planet Triskelion. You are to be trained and spend the rest of your lives here. Well, the episode was the Gamesters of Triskelion and the character was Galt. And he was a slave of the three brains that ran Triskelion, as was everybody else. We all had collars on, and uh, for one reason or another, Galt had become like a trustee in a prison. And if somebody did something wrong, Galt would stare at him, and then the collars would begin to choke. Not Galt, but everybody who was in trouble. Bad. I think he did whatever it was he had to do, otherwise he would be choked. Nobody was free of being able to be dealt with by the brains or whomever right away. So they said to Gaul, see to it that this person stops that or get them in line or whatever, except you never heard them say that. Um, beyond that, I mean, I suppose he would be just as happy to have his collar come off, which I think you got the sense of at the end, that everybody's collar came off. But he himself was not actively nasty. He was just a boss being bossed by other bosses. The Gamesters of Triskelion was notable as one of the few Star Trek episodes in which Lieutenant Uhura does something besides tell Captain Kirk that hailing frequencies are open, sir. A little biographical information. Uhura, whose name means freedom in Swahili, is a citizen of the Bantu nation of United Africa of the 23rd century. She's a skilled fighter, an accomplished linguist, and the crew has often been treated to her fine singing voice. She's one of the most valuable members of the crew and very possibly, next to me, the best singer. The 
episode you're about to see, the Gamesters of Triskelion, is an update of the ancient and barbaric practice of using human beings as combatants in contests of survival. Gene Ruddenberry was particularly interested in this story, but instead of looking at it from an historical perspective, he chose to envision a future society that would be drawn to such an uncivilized spectator sport. It was Gene's contention that a society could progress to an intellectual state so advanced that they lose the sheer joy of pure physical challenge. They're forced to live vicariously through others, and the results can be deadly. And by the way, if you're thinking that this sort of notion has no relevance in today's society, think again, or just turn on a football game this Sunday. Star Trek was produced on a tight schedule. Nowadays, most television episodes get a schedule of eight or nine days. We had only six days. More days meant more money, and one thing we never had enough of was money. Rushed schedules sometimes led to errors or inconsistencies. Take a look at Galt's robe. The three-armed symbol of Triskelion rotates counterclockwise, while the symbol everywhere else in the show rotates clockwise. Evidently, there was a breakdown of communication somewhere between our set dressing and wardrobe departments. Either nobody noticed it when we were shooting, or more likely, it was noticed, but there wasn't enough time or money to go back and fix it. One of the central themes of Star Trek has always been that as a species, we need challenges to overcome. It's a lack of challenges, the lack of goal-oriented behavior that can lead a civilization to decadence, moral and physical decay. In this case, challenge is personified in James T. Kirk. This wasn't the only time that Captain Kirk wagered his abilities against the lives of his crew. Kirk made similar bets in the Squire of Gothos and Arena. It seems that our captain is quite confident in his ability to triumph over adversity. Lucky for us, he stayed in shape. Thank <laughs> you.